Mayor Tory to speak. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I, you know, earlier on, Councillor Carroll uh, made a suggestion that this debate was acrimonious and I'd somehow be concerned about that. And it was going along, actually, I thought quite well. There's a difference of opinion in the room on one issue in particular, but I will say the last few minutes, unfortunately, have been, I think, just disappointing in terms of the tone in the room. And I certainly think we have to be careful about, uh, you know, starting into the notion that we're going to have motions and, and decisions taken that sort of start to have a balkanized uh, you know, policies across the city and people are going to start excluding themselves. I realize we have some historical artifacts that exist in that area, but I think we're trying to go to the way of fixing those as opposed to having more areas. But I'll speak to the issue at hand now, Madam Speaker. Um, you know, if, if our objective here is to have a livable, uh, balanced, uh, affordable uh, city in which all interests are, are taken into account, then I think you, yes, of course you can start from the principle, and I'm very sympathetic to it, that people should generally be allowed to do with their property uh, what they wish and how they see fit. But I think we've also readily accepted the principle in this place, and I think the people do too, that it is our responsibility uh, to place reasonable limitations on that, especially uh, you know, because we are, we are a community. And so, for example, and it was, uh, you know, I was thinking to myself, Councillor Carroll used the example of a brothel that you couldn't organize uh, under the law and use your property that way. I had chosen in my own notes I wrote this morning before she said that to refer to an amusement park um, and said you couldn't put that in your backyard and somebody might want to analyze that one day. But the bottom line is, even though it's your property, you can neither operate a brothel nor an amusement park um, and just say, well, that's my property, I'm going to do that. And you can't just add a story at will uh, to your house because you need the space without going through a regulatory process, even though it's your house. And so to me, I mean, this is, uh, pe people will say, well, the business of short-term rentals is different because it's all happening kind of inside the house, as it were. Well, that's true, theoretically, but I guess I I've been now as the mayor, and others have as well, because I heard specific references to specific places, but I've been to places I was asked to come to see the disruption that is going on uh, because of absentee uh, landlords, absentee owners who are using these houses for Airbnb and, and similar short-term rental arrangements, and that it's causing huge disruption that is not within the character of those neighborhoods um, and is causing a lot of grief for a lot of people. And so the need to me for us to act in principle and do something and bring forward, and I do thank our staff very much for all of their work on this, was something that I was uh, very comfortable with. And I think that the notion that we could just leave things alone um, was, uh, was not uh, really viable. So as is often the case, we're confronted with the challenge of finding something in between two poles. The one pole saying, let's just do nothing and leave it alone, and the, there hasn't been much talk of that. Uh, and the other pole being, uh, let's just uh, uh, ban this altogether and not have any uh, kind of short-term rentals at all. And so what our staff have tried to come up with, and I think we've been working through today, uh, trying to find something that fits into a middle ground that will acknowledge what Councillor Holland said, which is the reality that both technology and just people's way of life as it were. I, years ago, I think, I think if I'd asked my parents if they'd ever even thought of renting out, you know, sort of, they, they would have said, well, I don't want a stranger coming into my house. I think a lot of people felt that way. Now we're, we're you know, easier about that and just say, sure, why not? And, and it's sometimes for financial and sometimes for other reasons. I should say, by the way, as a sidebar, that I don't think in any way um, that the notion that I'm about to get to here, which is secondary suites, diminishes the rights of owners at all. Owners are the ones that lease a space to tenants and the landlord ultimately is the one that sets the terms of the lease and if they don't want it to happen then it won't happen in the context of them just saying it can't happen. So here we are with this choice and I think just as we said yesterday with regard to shelters, the challenge for us is to do the, to do the right thing the right way. I can't in conscience as much as I've heard all the different arguments at this point in time with the shortage we have of affordable rental housing, with the vacancy rate we know we have, with the very discussion we had yesterday about the reason for our shelters being over capacity is because there isn't affordable housing for people to go to. I don't know how I can sit here and sort of say, well, as we just spent a whole year for the first time achieving our target and exceeding it in terms of affordable housing that gets approved, then having housing leak out the bottom of the bucket, you know, because we're going to say that, that we're going to let people uh, rent these on a short-term basis. I think we have to do everything we responsibly can do for now to say that right now, if you look at the public interest, and our job is to serve the overall public interest, it is in maintaining as much housing as possible for, I'll call it permanent tenants, or tenants who are living there, as opposed to short-term tenants. And I'm sorry that that means some people will be disappointed by that, but that's our job. And the second thing 
uh, that I, I just wanted to comment on is that, um, I, that, that I'm, I'm very comfortable with these regulations in the context of fairness. It's been little talked about. But, uh, you know, we have hotels, and they're huge contributors to the success of our city on tourism, on taxes they pay, rules they have to follow, um, and they're, you know, they, they have a, a difficult challenge in front of them. And I think that what we're doing here is putting a framework in place that will allow for preservation of a, a rental stock, permission for many, many people who wish to do so to have short-term rentals in their home and use their property in that manner, a requirement that it be not absentee landlords, which I think will help with that situation I've seen in the places I've been asked to go, and promote fair uh, competition as between the different people who want to offer services to those who want to come and stay here. And so uh, those are my comments, but I think on the principal issue of the day, uh, which is the issue that has to do with secondary suites, I will be uh, supportive of, of, uh, of, of excluding them from the standpoint of, 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 land, of the owner of the house not being able to use those uh, to rent out separately. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Okay, so we will be dealing with, uh, yeah, planning, I, I believe planning and growth motions first. Oh, Councillor Grimes, did you have a point of order? Uh, yes, Madam Speaker, um, Councillor to Channels, that is uh, Kids Christmas um, concert, and he's asked that Ward 5 could be added to Councillor Fregadacker's motion. I, he just called me and asked if we could be added, so add it. Okay, planning and uh, we're doing planning and growth first, right? It's going to be on the screen. Okay, it's going to be on the screen. Okay, that's the order. Five. I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have, I guess, I guess. put the motions on the screen. Councillor Fragadakis. Sorry, on a, on a point of order, Councillor Grimes has just informed me that he'd like to have his ward included in my uh, motion eight. Okay, um, I'm sorry, but we've already got all the motions and we're ready to vote, so we can't amend the motions. Sorry, we're in the middle of votes. We can't amend motions. Okay, do we want to put the first motion on the screen, please? Our first motion is motion number 2A by Councillor Bailao. Recorded vote. Councillor Palacio, please. The motion carries 27 to 17. Next motion is revised by Councillor Fragadakis, recorded vote. We're in the middle of a vote, Councillor Fragadakis. Yeah. Councillor Fragadakis, I've already, I've already mentioned, we've already had the motions. Recorded vote.
Councillor Kelly, please. Councillor Palacio, Councillor Mahavik, please. The motion does not carry. The vote is 16 to 28. Motion three by Councillor uh, Crawford is redundant. And 9A by Councillor Shiner is redundant. So our motion to be by Councillor Bailau, recorded vote. The motion carries 35 to 9. Motion 5 by Councillor Fletcher, recorded vote. Councillor Crisanti, please. <clears throat> Motion 5 carries 42 to 2. Motion.